File Sharing and Torrents, Chapter 25. In 1999, back when the first iPod was still two years away from away, when the first iPod was still two years away, a website focused on something we're all taught from kindergarten to do. It shook the industry, music industry to its core and caused more uproar and controversy than any cuss-word-laden rap song to date. And that concept was file sharing. Like many things taught in school these days, the idea of sharing didn't really jive with the founding principles of profit and property in the music industry. But what happened was, in fact, sharing. The joke soon followed that Jesus did this with the loaves and the fish when feeding the 5,000. And I quote, now when Jesus had heard this, he withdrew from there to a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when they went ashore, he saw the great cr a great crowd and had compassion upon them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening and the disciples came to him, they said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And he said, We have only five loaves and two fish here. And he said, bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. And then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and, they, and, and the disciples gave them to the crowd. And they all ate and were satisfied. And he took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides the women and children. But did he? When it comes to the sharing of files online... We have to consider a few things if we're going to be Christian about it. Those th things are ownership, substance, and legality. Because the Bible doesn't deal with the stealing of digital bytes. It tends to deal with the stealing of physical things, like money or livestock, but not the latest ripped copy of your favorite rapper's or, or favorite rap artist, being shared to the masses via right-click and copy-paste. And this is the type of action of theft doesn't mean that Jesus stole something. First up, ownership. Jesus being God owns everything. So this is a really nice way of getting around the issue because God, even with every bit of documentation saying the fish or MP3 in question is yours, God owns it more. But does that circumvent the act of stealing? Jesus was fully God and fully man, which meant he had would have had to have been capable of the sin of theft in order to have resisted its temptation to steal. The question to the creator's ownership would seem to be applied to the Savior as theft, even when even miraculous theft would be a sin. But did he steal when he worked this miracle with multiplied the fish and the loaves? I don't think so. God creates things out of nothing, and in doing so, the created anything created has no previous owner before it when the fish and loaves were multiplied. I believe there was a new creation happening in specific emotions of the necessary pieces of loaf, loaves and fish. Translated into the MP3 situation, the act of copying a file makes something new. While the bytes of the information that make up the MP3 are virtually formless in their electronic form, it's still something that did not exist before. Which brings us to substance. MP3s and other digital files, while real, viewable, and printable, hold, close to, hold as close to nothing as we are likely in regards to get, in regards to their actual substance. All digital files are made up of electrons, cha changing between various types of floating resistors in a binary state. Those electrons, while infinitesimally small, still have mass. And that mass is one of the only, qu only qualifiers we have for whether something is an object or not. If an object isn't something that has mass, then it can't be stolen because it can't be held or contained. You can only steal things that exist, and even if that thing exists, even if the thing that exists is so small you can't measure it in real time, by the standard Christ could be accused of stealing by the breath from people, or the skin cells, or definition, our definition of the act of theft can be identified as belonging to another person, uh, deities or otherwise. From skin cells every time we touch, the hair falling out, trapped by a sweater, Jesus would have millions of unforeseeable and unpreventable sins of theft alone, if the nature of theft is divined by whether or not the object originated fr from, let alone where it multiplies, when he multiplies food for people. How could we know for sure that Jesus didn't steal, since our own law states that something can't be measured, it can't be counted as thefts and be taken willing as copy and paste? Maybe that's because Maybe that both asks and answers the question and shows us what we need need God to give us right and wrong alongside with lo shows us why we need God to give us right and wrong alongside loaves and fishes on occasion. The topic of legality. The world might count on the the world might count on the ability to copy and paste a file 
as wrong if the file could be made by someone else's money, but I don't. Not just because the Bible doesn't speak to these digital indiscretions, but because of the nature of the action. We have the time, we have to come to terms with the knowledge that computers and their capabilities like the cattle on a thousand hills are gods, and even when we use them Oh, where was it? Not because the Bible doesn't speak to these digital indiscretions, but because of the nature of their, their action. We have to come to terms with the knowledge that computers and their capabilities, like the cattle on a thousand hills, are gods, and even when we use them, their capabilities are not a foreign concept to God. The MacBook Pro did not sneak up on God in heaven and disrupt his plan for humanity, and neither did YouTube channels featuring free, free music from your favorite artist or Napster back in 1999. What we do when we copy and paste is so similar to what God did in creation of everything that it can't simply be ignored. When we hit control V, we make something with the intent out of nothing so far as we're able. While limited to the scope of creation inside itself through a computer, we take something and make an exact copy out of nothing, the space between resistors where the electron lands or is sent. This happens nowhere else in reality. Children are amalgamations of parents, plants have offshoots, but the buying and copying of electronic files are copies of electronic files. Pending no corruption during the copying process, they function identically. Which means a copy of this book you buy on Amazon for your Kindle and the copy I could give to you for free for the Kindle would be the same. Did that make me a thief because I shared it? No. Would it make your pastor a thief because he shares it? No. If something didn't exist before now and does in any our way, shape, or form, it exists because God created it. He alone is the creator, and to say something is wrong when it's not, a, when it's not is a lie. If the only reason the act of these copy and paste creations is considered wrong is because the world says so, then I'm knocking on wood to see the hand holding all the cards. Because the biggest opponent to this file sharing was an industry that was built on egos bigger than the stages they sang on. Music videos that are still what softcore porn was 30 years ago. And not to mention the wholesale objectification of women in their videos for the most part. There's a reason, for the in there's a reason that this industry, of all the possible industries, are connected to the web. It took a major beef with file sharing. It's because the last time something was made from nothing, mankind was promised a savior from the sins and the same reason sin convinced us to commit. Real discernment is learning to hear the hiss of the serpent when you're told he's not present. And I think the ability to copy and paste is a godsend for the proclamation of the gospel online. When sermon files can be copied and distributed easily, and hearers of the sermon can be taught and blessed by the Spirit, in far wider circles and than a simple church service would allow. Yeah, copyright applies to the preacher's intellectual property, but that's not really the point of a sermon now, is it? When Christian music can be copied and pasted to worship leaders across the globe for free, then the praises of our God are multiplied. This is illegal because it represents an exponential jump in the ability to get the gospel to more people, even by proxy. So I'm, I'm tangentially aware of uh, kind of how this works, especially for Christian music industry. And I, and I argue elsewhere in the book that I, I want people to get paid for what they do. But what I do want to understand is that that make there's a very big difference than making a book which like not only did I write the intellectual property behind this but I've gone through the work to make sure that these as an object can get produced and so if that's stolen that's stolen against the time it takes to produce the cost of the materials to produce and my intellectual property and the time it took me to produce uh, that as intellectual property um, once that's done though the diminishing returns on that, you know, fade almost to zero. Like when you create a worship song, um, let's say it takes you a week of trying to come up with something that's, you know, aesthetically pleasing, but also biblically accurate, and you create a worship song. Uh, that worship song, uh, once created and recorded, requires nothing to be transmitted freely. Uh, and what we do from that then, uh, and this is really tricky, is we, we then start charging for the use of of the thing that can be created by, you know, actions that are almost trivial. Like, almost to the point where, like, this is so easy to copy and paste this file of the chord progressions or this file of the, you know, initial recording and how it sounds. You could give that to any pastor, worship pastor or, or church choir director, anything like that. You could give that to anybody with this. And that's it. 
you know, you could just give it to that person if they asked, uh, and it would be that hard and that painful and that toil-inducing and that costly to the person to be able to go like that. And it's just given. And I, and I see some of the rates that we're charging for people to be able to do that. Uh, and conversely, what, you know, the, the current streaming industry is paying people who play along with that. You know, like, I, uh, I have friends who have music up on Spotify and, like, SoundCloud and all that kind of stuff. And their song has to be listened thousands of times per day to just make, you know, 20 bucks. And it's like, that that's not representative. Because they understand how this works. They understand there's no cost. And are just reaping profit left, right, and center. And Christianity is playing ball. And instead, milking Christians for what should be free interactions of like Christian content between Christians, because it points to you know higher praise of God and it's evangelistic in nature. When we start looking at that kind of stuff, when we start really looking at you know are we doing Christian things in a worldly way uh, because of what the internet is allowing everyone to do because of that kind of stuff, and you talk about streaming and torrents and file sharing. Uh, we realize that, you know, we have all been told that that stuff is, you know, illegal and wrong and immoral and it's something that pirates do because, you know, there's never any good pirates. Or it's something that really does mimic what Christ did. And when done with Christ-like things uh, is exactly, you know, what we should be doing with those Christ-like things. So uh, it's a controversial take for sure. Totally understand it. But, you know, on to the next chapter. I think we're almost done.